say is, Sarah, I think you're wonderful. You're the best manager that I know. And you have been so wonderful to this community for so many years. You take such great care of the actors. I think what we have in common is we believe a lot of the same things. And I think it's really lucky to find and to work with people who believe what, what you believe. And just thank you for being such a friend to the studio for all these years and, and yeah. taking care of the people the, the way you take care of them. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I, re I really enjoy it. And I've loved sitting in some of your classes. It's been, been a great experience. I love watching you work with people and how you've elevated performances. Thank you. It's very special. So thank you. Yeah. And I think, um, I think some actors talk about it is like, why do we, you know, why do we do this? Do you guys truly love acting? And I think the folks that are here truly love acting and they do it. One of our actors, Teo Cristea in masterclass, Teo, I don't know if you're here, but, um, said it, it makes her high to do this work. It's like, it, it's like a way to live life, you know, lit up. So I'm going to start right in with, with this. And then this is a good way to start. Again, uh, thank you guys for joining us today. I'm here having a conversation with um, celebrity manager Sarah Jackson, owner of Seven Summits Pictures and Management. Sarah and her team for years have launched some of the most exciting careers in Hollywood. I have been thrilled to you know, be a part of that in the way that I've been a part of that and to know you. And I'd like to start with this. I want to read many management companies also throughout this, you know, COVID experience we're going through have been trying to like offer things to actors, but trying to sell things to actors. And one of the things that Sarah and her team did was they launched this initiative to support this charity to get personal protection equipment, PPE equipment in the hands of first responders. And the actors that donated to that, Sarah and her entire team at Seven Summits took meetings with all of them, quite lengthy meetings, in fact, and really took care of them and supported them and gave them some incredible advice. And I just think in a time when, you know, a lot of folks are doing things for the wrong reasons, that was one of the most beautiful gestures that I've seen. So thank you for doing that, Sarah. That was my pleasure too. I, I really enjoyed it, actually. It did get a bit overwhelming. Eugene was kind enough to send out my little flyer. And so oh, nice. many people, Eugene, I don't know if I told you when I would ask how, you know, how did you come about it, would say, oh, I follow Eugene um, and whatever he does, I will do. So I really thank you. <laughs> cool. Eugene, Thanks, Eugene Simon. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to start with, um, to set the tone for this, because there's a lot of fun things to talk about. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good information, but there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of what I call mind viruses or stories of suffering that are told. And one of the things that's been great, Sarah, about you coming to be a, a part of the work is starting like setting the record straight, your, your, your strong opinions about what should happen, what does happen. And Sarah wrote this beautiful letter to one of the actors at the studio and, and asked to share it with everybody. And I've been sharing this beautiful letter with everybody that I've been working with for some years. And it speaks to what, Sarah, it's an incredible letter. Um, you should publish it. It speaks to what a great agent manager relationship looks like. And it might not be your relationship, but it's something to strive to. And I would like to start by reading this letter and then start the conversation that way. Um, so it's essentially, dear actors, I'm in such a fortunate position of having my own business. For me, that's been everything. In the same way I get to hire people that I admire, trust, and believe in, I also get to choose what actors I want to work with. And this is, I love this sentence, I don't work with anyone whose work I don't at some level absolutely believe in, okay? I also don't work with anyone I don't personally like. Sometimes relationships don't develop or work out in the way I had hoped, but that's in every aspect of life. And this is a tough job, you say. You have to make hundreds of calls for your clients, and you're lucky if one in 20 pans out to an appointment, a high-level audition, and then maybe one in 100 appointments lands a job. It's hard to wake up in the morning and continue to do that for people you don't like, and it's impossible for someone whose work doesn't inspire you that you say, that's how I feel. I realize it might not be um, as helpful as possible, but I do think you have to work on the relationship like any other one. And here are a few pet peeves. 
don't go weeks without calling your manager, but don't call daily for a 20 minute conversation. I love that. It's a, that's a good, um, guideline. If you get breakdowns, a friendly reminder to a manager goes something like, uh, Sarah, just to remind you, my friend X is directing X movie. I see it's casting now is useful as is just a reminder that you sent me on that great project X a few weeks back and the casting director said I was awesome, but they needed a name. I see she's now doing X. Sounds like it could be right for me. Or reminder, I'm friends with X. I hear he's now directing a pilot I'm right for. These all speak to you having built the relationships before, basically. I I'm saying that. What's not useful is X is looking for a 30-year-old Indian lady. Um, or not communicating as to why you don't like something and are passing. Being late or unprepared for auditions. And you say we're all humans with egos and appreciate gratitude and thanks, etc. And lastly, finding reps you really share our sensibility with and connect on a personal level is so important. It will help you through the roller coaster of this career. And they should encourage you when things are looking bleak and also be able to say, as I did to a client recently, get over yourself. I do hope you find a dream team. I'm always happy to give support to, um, um, to, the, to the community here at the studio. And you say some really nice things about me, and I'm, I don't need to say that. But Sarah, this letter, um, I have had so much fun um, so much fun sharing it with actors, empowering actors with it. I, I, I love your thoughts on it, on this letter, you know, as it's been a little while since you wrote it, but um, welcome again and thank you for being here. Where shall I start? I think, we, I, I, I can guide the start here. I think it is one of the neat things about this letter that it really screams is the, is the idea of personally liking another person, this industry based on not your wants or your desires or, or necessarily how good you are, but the kind of human being you are. I tell the act, I tell you guys all the time and you guys, if you, if you haven't come to a free audit, a lot of you guys have been our friends and family for years. So I know you're looped into the work, but if you haven't, you're invited. Um, there are three things that you want to establish in life and in this industry. And these three things, when you walk into any situation are this, and you want to establish that you're fun to play with that you're someone that somebody can personally like and vice versa, and that there's no desperation. But at the heart of this is you're not talking about you're working with people that you personally like, like the people first and foremost. If you could maybe speak to that, like the person one is. Um, and then the other thing which you said, which is really great at, at some point, is Joseph, when I work with a new person, new actor, when we – bring them aboard the team, I need to be very clear about how I'm going to sell them when I pick up the phone to call. And so the two things are the people you are, the personalities, and actually using the phone. Because whether you guys know it or not, most reps had no idea they were supposed to use the telephone. So on, on, on those two things, would just love to hear um, your thoughts on those. Okay. So I began my career having to use the telephone because at the beginning of my career, I didn't really know anybody. I came to, um, to this country not knowing a single solitary soul and having a few sort of degrees of, of recommendation. But when I started, basically all I could attract in terms of clients with people who I've seen on the stage or in little short movies and just felt a shared sensibility with. So um, I had to get on the phone. I had to make calls that to people who I never really thought would take my call and who were kind enough to. And I have to remember today when I get, uh, when I forget that, you've got to keep doing it. So we, I started off not... Um, getting a lot of incoming calls. And so now I'm definitely in that mindset. I love discovering new talent and I'm in that mindset and encourage everybody in my office to also make those calls you don't think are gonna get answered, those calls that may seem, uh, you know, that they're not gonna bear fruit and just go for it. Just keep on making, keep on picking up um, the phone every morning to think every morning, what am I gonna do for 
Eugene Simon. I hope you don't mind me referencing you a few times. But um, got his mouth filled with fish and chips probably right now. Anyway, <laughs> so um, it has to be because it's sometimes so difficult and so overwhelming the amount of no's you get uh, of clients getting close on things and getting called back even sometimes getting the pilot and being fired you have to really like that person to get up the next morning and still be excited to push for them so that's how i feel and it may be different i'm sure it is for other uh, managers and reps but i feel that personally if i'm not rooting for them and don't believe in them i don't have anybody i don't believe in uh I have to want their success as much as they do, which means believing in them and really liking them and wanting to see success and believing that if not now, it will happen. So that is my, my, my it's an instinct too. I think you can be in a room with somebody and make a connection and you realize you're sharing a sensibility but you don't always know if that will pan out but i feel i've developed good instincts now in the room and i know uh and know that i want to work for somebody which is essentially uh, essentially working for somebody what was this last question? You? Yeah, no, I'll get to that. It's, um, yeah, it, it, you kind of tackled them. You kind of tackled them both, which is like sort of making the phone call. See, this is really important is making the phone calls versus reps whose only strategy is just submitting actors out there versus picking up a telephone. And you guys know who, who have been here. We talk about that all the time. It's like, Steve Jobs said the ability to use the phone properly separates the doers from the dreamers. And Jimmy Iovine talked about it a lot in his, um, the documentary he did, I believe it was Dre, um, about using the, it was like using the phone or, or you had to use the phone. That's the only way uh, to make stuff happen. So yeah, maybe a, a, a little bit about that and, and using the telephone as part of your, you know, as part of your strategy. Well, actually one, um, documentary that I really recommend is called His Way and it's um, Jerry Weintraub who died quite recently. He was a huge producer and a one-time manager. Um, he had some interesting singer-songwriters and he became obsessed with wanting to represent um, and build the career of Elvis Presley and I'm just blanking on the name. It was Colonel somebody who was Elvis Presley's sort of the Colonel. Yeah. I don't remember his name. I think, was it just the Colonel or, you know, but anyway, um, Jerry Weintraub called every day for a couple of years wanting to connect with Elvis Presley. And mm. at some point the Colonel likes, okay, come down, let's do it. So I've always kind of admired Jerry Weintraub for continuing to be persistent for standing up again, even when his back's against the wall. And um, so I feel like that goes to the power of making phone calls. Colonel Tom Parker, somebody, oh, we have a wonderful people putting it in the chat for him, right, Sarah? Uh, Colonel Tom Parker, okay. Thank yeah. you. Steve Jobs. Said, yes, that's a wonderful documentary. His way. To look at and to, and, and to consider in how to fight against adversity and just to keep on, on going because it's tough. And Steve Jobs would, had a really good story. He said the ability to use the phone properly separates the doers from the dreamers and described his start when he was 12 years old, picking up the phone, looking up Bill Hewlett in the phone book, calling Bill Hewlett to get a part for something he was building. And Bill Hewlett was so blown away that this kid picked up a phone, gave him a job um, in one of the plants. And, and from that day on, um, realized the power of a telephone. I, I think coming back a little bit, Sarah, I tell the actors, it's a beautiful quote from Simon Sinek, uh, Silicon Valley author and presenter. And he said, people don't buy 
what you do, they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Why do you, what gets you up in the morning? Why, why do you do what you do? What do you love about what you do? What's fun for you? Okay, so I started after I left um, university in London. Well, firstly, I always loved film and television. And I didn't really know, I, I knew for sure I wasn't going to be on camera. And actually, I hate speaking in public, so I'm feeling very brave right now. Um, Thank you, Sarah. So I love film and television. I had some friends who were actors. Um, and I would go almost every night to the theatre when I was in London. So... It was a dream in a way to find something in that business that I felt passionate about. And actually, I'm going a little bit off topic here. Good. <laughs> but Go I wherever was you... um, interviewed last week for a Netflix documentary, also which I hated doing, because I was actually in front of the camera, which is so uh, <laughs> difficult for me. But so there's a series on Netflix <laughs> called Movies That Made Us. And before I came out here, I worked for a casting director, kind of interned for a little bit. Um, her name was Mary Selway, an illustrious casting director who unfortunately um, died a few years ago. But she'd cast the Aliens movies. And she hired me to specifically look for that character of Newt. Remember the little girl in the yes. second movie? Absolutely. Um, and I drove uh, all over. She had to be able to have an American accent, and they didn't want to bring to England, to Pinewood Studios, um, an, an American little girl. There was a limit then to the amount of visas they could get. And so I had this idea to drive around all of the um, U.S. Air Force bases in England, of which is about 15, and interview, you know, take photos of interesting little girls and so firstly I remember making so many calls this is back to the situation kind of yeah. begging to be able to allow me in there and a lot of them said no but then I'd call again and say I just went to Lakenhurst so please yeah. let me in um, so I drove around the country and then I did something that I cannot imagine would be allowed now walked into schools into the cafeterias and took uh -huh. pictures of little girls. Uh -huh. And um, so that eventually led to the casting of Newt. Carrie Hen was um, the little girl and she was marvelous. Anyway, so I was interviewed on this show called Movies That Made Us. Um, but that was also a persistent being on the phone, having a lot of no's, saying I was going into Lakenhurst, where I wasn't really yet, and so mm -hmm. you go back and say you were. I mean, just finding David Frost, the English um, interviewer, uh, talks a lot about that with his relationship with Nixon. And um, the other thing, I, back to phone calls, yeah. was when I came over here, I actually thought I want to produce. I was very quickly... Uh, <clears throat> realized that I actually didn't want to, but I was sharing a um, apartment with somebody, Richard Shepard, who is now a successful director, television director. We were sharing an apartment. He just left NYU. I just left London um, University and he wanted to be a writer director and I thought, oh, I want to be a producer, even though I had no idea what that meant. And he'd written a script while he was in school. And he'd always dreamed that David Bowie would play a central character. And I picked up the phone to um, a lady called Carla Hacken, who was at ICM, and introduced myself. And she represented David. Um, and she said, well... Like, I'll take a read of it, but you should also call his manager. Um, and I made all these calls around David to people who were, you know, the manager put me onto somebody else and somebody else put me onto somebody else. We end up casting David in that movie. 
And not only that, he ended up um, financing some of it. Unfortunately, the movie, I'm not recommending it because it was a flawed movie. But that was a highlight of my life as well, working with David Bowie, who I'd grown up um, sort of idolizing. And, and also speaks to the power of not giving up and persistence. And that is what I look for in a client, somebody who will have a massive disappointment, but continues to stand up and go for it again. You forget about it and move on. It's easier said than done. And I can't say that I carry personally the courage of my conviction, but it is super important for your reps to do that, to be to do that and would like to have the support of the client and know that the client's going to be there for the next meeting, for the next opportunity. I'm not going to sit around being depressed for, you know, a few months because something didn't work out. <laughs> anyway. I, I love what you're, I just, this is great. This is the conversation I, I really wanted to have. I, I think the best reps are strategy partners for actors. And I think a lot of actors see the rep relationship in a way that m might not be so healthy, which is I just need to find reps so they can do what, you know, they can do everything that needs to get done. And I always say that no matter what highest level reps you have, if you have the great reps, you know, someone like you, Sarah, that, that, you know, it's still their responsibility, the 70, 80% of building relationships and networking and reaching out to the people that they want to collaborate with. We talk about it. it's not enough to be good. You have to be great. And when you're great, it's time to, uh, as you say, network, but to build relationships. How important is it, is, I'm assuming, is that what you're talking about in terms of your clients being, I say, pleasantly persistent, proactive? Is it useful for you when your clients build relationships with people and does it make it easier for you to pick up the phone or your team to pick up the phone? How important is networking for you uh, with your clients? I think it's everything. One, when you find your, your representation and believe in them and somehow can kind of relax in the knowledge that they are doing what you would hope they would do. It's not a time to sit back and wait. It's a time to constantly keep building the relationships that you already have built, remembering who you've met and build your community, the community of people who will essentially kind of grow up with you through the business and hire you, like you, write for you, think of you when they're casting. I think it's huge and through talking to some of the people, I hope I'm not, I, I'm repeating myself to some of the people who I've had calls with, but to that end, I strongly recommend a book called Never Eat Alone. And um, it's not about the entertainment industry. It's about building your own business and networking and thoughtfulness behind it. And, um, and it has some very good tips and how to keep in touch with people that you've met um, in, a, in a way that does not seem disingenuous. And so, for example, you're sitting down with somebody and you get a little nugget of information about them that is probably personal. Um, so you're keeping, and then, you can reconnect with them and say something that where they realize that you've heard them and you've thought about them. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm really sorry if I'm repeating myself, but for example, let's just take an example. You know, Eugene Simon likes fish and chips. But that could be somebody um, that you would want to keep in touch with. Eugene, tell me. <laughs> Eugene just got he's coming right back in he just to just let us know that he got locked out but he, he's coming right back in Eugene are you I'll back in before he goes back in so for example or you go <laughs> to the casting director you find out they you know play a certain musical instrument I'll put my hand up then so I play the drums and so now you um, um, so you find out some little bit of information and then you reach out not saying oh see me on Criminal Minds tonight you reach out saying 
you, you know, did you see that that drummer was performing at the Wilton? Something like that. Uh, you know, best football fans, you might want to say, congrats, I see Manchester City, you know, whatever it is. I'm speaking personally because I can't think of any other. But I think what you're, you're paying tribute to them. You're, you're making it about them. Yeah. Because the worst thing is those little cards sometimes people send saying, like, watch me tonight or kind of update, this is my new reel. I mean, at some point, we might want to ask for that. You've remembered them and you like them and you're glad that they've done something interesting. But to get, it just doesn't stand out from all of the others where a call that is a little bit personal and thoughtful may. Another thing that I do is I read the trades every day and I look for people who I know and I send them a congrats or whatever it might be. Congrats on your ascendancy. Congrats on the success of such and such movie. And I don't then put at the bottom, and can we have lunch or, and do you have something for this actor? I just, that's it. Because, and the reason I do it is, it may be a year or two since I've spoken to them, business kind of changes. And I don't want them to forget about me. And the same to you. You've had a great meeting with the casting director and you've sat there for an hour or so and kind of got to know each other, or not even an hour or so. And they may have a project. They may have loved your audition, enjoyed speaking to you, but they may not have a project then. And six months from now, when they do have something right for you, they've met a bunch of other people and unfortunately aren't necessarily thinking about you. Um, so how are you going to keep in touch with them? So I feel the writer of this book should pay me my 10% because I recommend <laughs> it all the time. Um, and it has some kind of good ideas about how to go about that and connect with people in an authentic way. I've said this in a, to a bunch of you already. So Never Eat Alone. Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. Okay, Keith Ferrazzi. Oh, Someone can maybe put it in the comment section below, um, whoever can write it first. Yeah. Um, Eugene, you are back in. an example of my persistence. I'm not very good at, like, you know, self pushing myself, but I, I, it speaks to your previous conversation of keeping on going, keeping on going. So Keith Ferrazzi, the writer of that book, wrote another book. I can't remember its name. I ended up reading it, but it wasn't so interesting. But anyway, he was speaking in L.A., and I went to see him. And in the entrance in the reception, they had they're selling his second book. And they say, if you buy two books, you can have a conversation with Keith Ferrazzi. So I bought two books and I thought, this is great. Yeah. Only to discover that it was a, he was, you know, before Zoom, he was talking and um, you could type in a question or something. So I was so upset that that's what it was after i bought two books i thought it was a dialogue that kept complaining i kept calling them and saying it's wrong it's false advertising and then i got a call from him and so you just have to keep going i don't know building that network he had some interesting advice for me too but that doesn't really it's not relevant to you so i'll leave it Thank you, Sarah. And again, just a reminder, you guys, thank you for being here. Please mute yourselves. If you're not uh, me or Sarah, when you can speak, you can unmute and go to speaker view. If you just want to see Sarah filling out the whole screen, gallery view is when you want to see everybody. It's at the upper right. And I want to talk about this. You said something really cool once, Joseph. When I, when I work with an actor um, when, or when someone's referring me an actor, I need to be very clear about how I'm going to sell them when I pick up the phone. Um, if you could, I, I love that language that you use. How are you going to sell them when you pick up the phone? And I, I tell actors, it's not your rep's responsibility to figure out what that thing is, your marketing or your branding. It's important that, you know, everybody, you know, they have it as your strategy partners, but you're able to deliver it on a silver platter to people is that it's really good thing to start thinking about what is that thing again, to support your reps, your reps being an incredible booster, um, in a grouping of boosters, how would you, if you could talk a little bit about no needing to know how you're going to sell your, how you're going to sell your clients when you pick up the phone, how important is that for you knowing how to sell them and how do you figure that out? I, I, 
I've always been really curious about yeah. that um, when you said it. Oh, it's hard, especially if people don't have very much on their resume. We need to have ammunition, something to say when we call it. It isn't enough just to have your reps, like I referenced before. So when I was doing, I actually had an idea when I was doing these kind of advice calls, because there was a girl I don't know if she's online, but feel free to raise your hand if you, if you are. Oh, yeah. She was so blonde and petite and so pretty and, and kind. There was like, a, a, you know, there's something really lovely about her. But um, I hope some of you don't mind me saying it's not easy at this time to sell pretty, you know, beautiful blonde. You know, it's a time of diversity. And... At the end of the conversation, she said to me that her father was a, a world-class poker champion. And not only that, she made a living in between acting gigs and now during this, um, this break, she's making a living playing poker. And that was so random and so sort of unexpected. <laughs> Are you here? No. Um, um, if she's here, yeah, please do speak up if you're here. You, you mentioned this. I thought this was such a cool story. Yeah. I thought I'll always remember her because that was something, an interesting hook, something to talk about. I mean, I don't know if you'd call a casting director and pitch it, but you might sort of put it underneath as just sort of an interesting thing. So I say, what is your kind of, you know, if you try to think of your hook, um, like, I will always remember that girl just because it was such a, it was such a shock to see, um, I don't know if shock's the right word, but it was, it, it was something for her to talk about that made her really interesting that was completely out of left field. So things like that to think about. I have to admit that it's hard when mm, there's nothing on a reel um, one thing is that I've said if you have a comedy skill it's slightly well there's two things Not um, I'm going to go back that for a while we might meet somebody in an actor's showcase um, people have just left school and so for a while we, you can call producers, directors, casting people and say, they haven't done anything, but I'm, you, you know, for you to see, but I saw them at UCB and I have to tell you, this is, you know, whatever the line is, a star in the making. They were brilliant. They captured my attention. You have to meet them. But you can't keep saying that. A year from now, I you can't get on the phone and say, oh, I was once at UCB and I saw this actor. So there has to be something fresh i think for people in the comedy world that is something to really consider as is during this time there are so many interesting people building um their fan base and thereby getting sort of acknowledged and thought about by um you know by the industry for having creative ideas that they are streaming. For example, I was just watching some, something that Sarah Ramos has been doing where she's been reenacting um, scenes from movies. She did the social network and it's funny and she's really built yeah. up a, um, a following which then can translate into something to talk about. Oh gosh, during the COVID pandemic, this is what she did. I mean, Sarah Ramos, she's, she was on Parenthood, but apart from that, I kind of didn't really know who she was. I, I don't, you know, think anybody's really looking out for her. But if I represented her, I would surely say, did you see the work she was doing? Because it was funny, um, you know, and you can send it around. So you can create your own material now that would be valuable. Yeah. Yeah, I did a video yesterday. The backstage video was how to create a celebrity, sort of celebrity level reel. Is it just a different way of doing reels? And I talk about it, Sarah, the, the benefit sometimes of delivering 
a lot of actors with these reels, they're delivering too much information. And I think it's important to think of a reel as a strategy tool to deliver production relevant material, not a whole bunch of stuff that has nothing to do in style and content from what you're pitching and strategizing for. I'd love to talk about this. I have a lot of fun um, telling you guys all the things you can clear off your plate. You know, the stories of suffering, the mind viruses, the fear-based advice transferred actor to actor. And I, I think we're both on the same page is that I, I believe casting directors who respect actors schedule general meetings with those actors. General meetings are not just with casting directors. They're with production companies, uh, network execs, produ writers, directors, producers. Um, do you share the same thoughts about these casting director workshops where, you know, we're talking about not the SAG after stuff or the diversity showcase. What's your view on these workshops for actors, Sarah? How do you feel about that? Kind of mixed. There was that whole controversy about paying to play. And definitely, like the SAG actress stuff, I, I so uh, support. Yeah, that's good stuff. And then, of course, you can get in front of a casting director and do great work. Look for a casting director if you're going to go this, uh, this route. Look for a casting director who is cast shows that you really could be on, that, you, that are right for you. Um, and then I don't know, and but that would be another way, Joseph, don't you think, after you've done that, of keeping in touch with... Absolutely, but I kind of feel like my, my problem with a lot of the workshoppy type places are that the, it's not the head casting director that does it, it's like an associate, and, yeah, yeah. and they, they're basically taking anybody with a check, and so you're in a pool of people who should have no business getting into it, you know, they're not ready to act, they're not ready for prime time, yeah. and it it sometimes puts the casting director and the actor on this sort of skewed, I always empower actors to come into conversations as, as colleagues, as equals, but in a, in a nice way without, you know, being obnoxious, but to, but to sort of come in on equal footing. And I think a lot of these workshops set up a skewed dynamic that this casting director is this sort of all powerful gatekeeper. They're an important alliance to have for sure, but they don't jangle the keys to the, you know, they're not the keys to the, to the career. And I think a lot of actors are so, so solely focused on that. I just think it's equally important to build relationships with the people who are also yes. creating this material and are going to be able to get to know who you are as a human being. Yeah. So just expanding okay, it. I do, now you've mentioned that I, I'm, I, I absolutely agree, especially to hear that some of them just send out their assistants. Oh yeah. Um, some of them don't, but some of them do. Yeah. Yeah. And I really agree with what you've said about you not having some equal footing and that there are people also in that class who may be just starting. Um, yeah. How do you shine? I, I, I agree with you. One other thing that I don't like, if I may say, um, is the, the showcases. You know, where you pay to... Um, Especially, like, you did a really good one, but it was different. People had time, and it was on a stage, and it was... And everybody had dinner afterwards. It was like everyone had a, like, catered dinner afterwards. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's an, so and everyone's sort of in there as colleagues and equals, yeah. and, and they're all friends and family. Yeah, it just depends on how it's, basically depends on how it's done, but I completely agree with you. So I went to one, I, I just really don't want to do it anymore, where um, you're sitting in a small room, and there was four or five other agents, managers there. And people came in, did a couple of minutes of a monologue or, you know, a scene that they were preparing. And then they had given, uh, um, you know, the people that organized it, gave us a little piece of paper, which said headshot, resume, like, for, like a, on a tiny piece of paper that you have to give your thoughts, performance, I, was like, I can't speak to any of this. You need a dialogue with some with somebody, and then they're out the out the door. So what you did was really that was very fun and entertaining, and um, and then you got a chance to mingle and give proper advice, not just exactly. And everybody introduced themselves as equals. Yeah, it just it just depends the spirit in you know in which it's done for sh you know for sure. 
Um, I love the way you said needing ammunition. That's, uh, that's really good is needing, needing some ammunition. I try to get you guys as actors to think about what that could be. And, you know, until you have, I mean, until you have great credits and even when you have great credits, it's really important to, f to get a grip on, you know, uh, one of the good friends and great teachers, Annie Chang said this, don't let your need to be liked get in the way of showing people who you are or your best work or your need to be chosen or accepted is start answering questions about like who you are. Why would you be fun for somebody to work with for six years? You know, the kind of person you are, how much does the person, the personality, Sarah, I say this a lot in acting, 90% of the performance is the personality of the actor. How much is the personality, just the human element of that person? How, how much is that responsible for somebody's success potential um, versus the acting? Would you say? Would you agree? But it's, you know, maybe 70, 30. I would. I, 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 could, put, I could possibly, like, 70 personality, 30 uh, talent or and opposite. you have to deliver, of course. If you can't of deliver. Of course you have to deliver, yeah. But I would say it's a lot. People want to work with you. They hire their friends. They might want to develop for you. They, I think it's huge. But then, of course, you have to deliver. So some people talk about, you know, they have family or good friends who could help them, but maybe don't want right. to take advantage of that. Right. And I think that's a mistake. <laughs> take advantage of every single actor. Um, you know, I'm friends with somebody who's not on this, I know. And she wrote much in her mother's style, and she, she is a really fine, entertaining, binge-worthy writer. And, I, and she was always kind of concerned about not stepping on her, you know, not using her mother's wraps and not stepping on her mother. And I always kind of disagreed with her and sort of encouraged her to do that. And now her mother's passed away, I feel like. It's a shame. Um, Sarah, I hear this all the time, you know, I think there's a, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about how rep actor relationships work, but you know, I, I think a lot of actors, I, I, why do you think, and I don't, I don't, maybe just a boring question to ask, but why do you think most reps, I would say most reps never knew that it was their responsibility to also use a telephone to, I always talk with actors about strategy is threefold. It is Laying, Matthew McConaughey said this once at one of our bar nights. He said, it's strategy is like putting, laying claim to something. And part of that is the pregame, is, is building relationships, is connecting with productions. It's delivering the best acting you can possibly do on the game day. And also your follow-up strategy is very important. Why, I, I guess, what is it that you think prevents I think most reps never knew that they were supposed to do that. They say if they get on the phone, someone will get mad at them. I think it's fear-based. But what do you think about that? Well, I think I would agree that it's fear-based and you have to overcome that. And I think the other thing is so many people have not had to do the grunt work and are not used to doing the grunt work. And somehow they've been, you know, been a big agency or management place and where they've been promised all sorts of things. Um, and these agents or managers have come from other agencies, bought a bunch of clients with them, and have never really had to do that grunt work. Or even, you know, you go to one of the major agencies and you're given a bunch of clients to work for, and then you take them away and become your own agency, your own manager. And you've never been used to, you don't know how to pick up that phone to get your calls returned. So I think that some people haven't had to do that and so don't know how to do it. They, they get incoming calls and they might find somebody whose material they really love, but it doesn't, you know, it, they're not used to developing careers, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I had a really fun conversation last week with a wonderful new actor, producer, writer, Scott Takeda, six time Emmy winner. And he said something really interesting. He said, we, we had a, just a private zoom chat. Um, he said, this is not a cause and effect industry. You're, the sheer amount of work, your effort 
does not equal results. Um, it's impact versus effort. How do you have greater impact? Seth Godin, one of my favorite authors, said this. He said, effort isn't the point. Impact is. If you solve a problem strategically, uh, if you solve a problem in three minutes, um, you've made art. And if you move 10,000 pounds of granite, sorry for your calluses, but you haven't made art, at least art that's not going to connect. Would you agree with what Scott said about this not being a cause and effect? I think a lot of actors think about you know, this sort of in terms of if I struggle a lot, if I put a lot of effort into it, if I, I climb, climb this big mountain, and I think it's easy to get attached to these stories of suffering. Um, how would you do, this is not a cause and effect, your sheer amount of work does not equal results. Do you, do you believe that? Or is it just, is it a lot of effort? Well, I'm thinking Obama didn't get elected because he tried hard, right? I mean. Yeah. In terms of the path some of your clients have had to success, um, would, you say, would you say they've all been different or is there, is there something common to the clients that you work with who have achieved a really high level of success? Is there a secret ingredient to that or is every path different? Would you agree that every path is different? I would. There's no sort of really right or wrong way but the right way is definitely to build a community around you of like-minded people. Yes. I don't think there's a wrong way. I'm trying to think. Did I answer that question properly? Yes. I think I just sort of wanted to see if you agreed with me because I, I, I don't think there is one size fits all path to success. Yes. We have some incredible people. I know that you've worked with that we've worked with people like Kiki Sukazane, who mm -hmm. um, Eugene and I are working with next Friday um, who basically came at it just because somebody knew who she was as a human being and loved her so much and referred her to some casting director yeah. and she instantly booked the lead in yeah. Heroes. And, and it's like, and she was interested in this charity when she wanted to use her fame and notoriety to bring more money. And just like, you know, it's, I, I always say it's possible to, when you're lit up with fun, to get to where you want to get to. I think, I think right now, the sort of path from A to B, it's, it's, it's a lot closer. It's easier than ever to reach out to people you've always dreamed of. So, yeah. um, I think yeah. there's a lot of roots. Is Martin, is Martin Davis on this call? I hope Martin Davis is on this call. He's wonderful. Oh. Martin, if you're on this call, speak up. Yeah, please. Okay, so he, He's so memorable, right? Hey, how you doing? So memorable and seems there he like, is. Oh, there you are. It was so much fun talking to you. And you had a whole different career to begin with. It's never too late. And I think that you were awesome the way you presented yourself. And I keep thinking about like going off on tangents. Yeah, Martin but, has been a member. Oh, sorry, sir. I don't want to interrupt you. No, it was a memorable, a memorable route. And you had a lot to back you up. Um, and all the charm and charisma and with a lot of help from Joseph, like, who wouldn't believe in you? That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to, listen, I want to get to your questions, you studio members who are here today. And if you could raise your hand below in the participant section. Um, this is a very big Zoom meeting. I'm going to do one thing where I'm going to quickly just mute, uh, mute everybody for a second. Sarah, if you could just unmute yourself uh, just so we can jump back in again. I do, I do think it's cool that you pointed out Martin because Martin is wonderful. You've been a Balcony member for weeks. And as a Balcony member, it's a membership where you have an unlimited watch pass to all our classes. You stand out um, so much in every single class. There's something about you that is so memorable. And it's, it's really cool, Sarah, that you also, you also felt that and, and mentioned Martin uh, as well, too. Let me, un, let me unmute you, Sarah. Let's see. Or if you can unmute. I'm just trying to stay mute. Oh no, you're good. No, I, I, I muted everybody. I did a mute oh. all because some microphones were were turned on. Um, I think that is yeah. Oh, the last thing too is I hear a lot of this. Sometimes age actors with reps, the actors will send them their best tape. I, I they'll put the most incredible footage together, and somehow the reps stop it. They didn't, they questioned the footage and the footage was great. And once the footage actually gets to production or casting, people love it. But 
I think it's important to how much do you get involved in your actor's work? Let's say if a tape comes in, do you, how much do you not question what they do because you totally believe in them? Or will you send them back to the drawing board? And then we'll get into some questions. Ashlyn, I wanted to ask you a question about that, but I send them back to the drawing board. If there's old yeah. material, material that it doesn't make them pop, lots of, of stuffing of them, you know, doing things that don't require acting skills, you know, yeah. this is me running down a hill. Yeah. You don't want to see that. You want to get sort of straight into it. Is that what you meant by this? Yes, I think it's about, I think a lot of uh, reps can be scared if actors make a brave choice. I mean, as Eugene Simon, who I hope is still here, if his fish and chips uh, is finished, um, he said, your job is to stand out without screaming. In an audition, it, it is, it doesn't get easier. He said, you just get braver. And that doesn't mean that you're, you know, screaming in an audition, but it means that, Sarah, I, it's so fun getting these notes from production when these incredible actors book work and the we got a great note from J.J. Abrams. Annie Chang got a note from J.J. Abrams uh, when she booked a lead in his last show. And he said, J.J. wrote her personally and said, Annie, thank you for being the only one willing to take a risk in that audition and doing what nobody had the bravery to do. It was the only reason why I told Showtime, we're done, we have our actor. And the other production note is, it wasn't at all what we were looking for, it was better. And so I'm talking about the brave choices that you've been a part of here I think that can be very scary for reps. And so sometimes I, I think um, a great performance will get shut down at the rep level before it gets to where it needs to get to. And that just could just be the sensibility of the rep. Yeah. I think that's why it's important to have a good relationship with your client and everything that I was saying before. Um, brave choices. That's what I loved about watching your class. Both times I've, I've, well, I sat in a live class, and the other night when we were on Zoom. How yeah, you the recent ones. You've come, you've come a lot, you know, many times in the past, yeah. And then what I really admire about some of the people you're working with, like, is Colby here? And uh, Colby, I don't if you're here, say hey, and then you'll pop right up on the main screen. If you're not, no like problem. The, the people, you encourage people to make those brave choices and how they so trusted you that they didn't resist and went for it in spite of the fact there's so many people watching them and they embrace them and that was brave. Yeah. So a kudos to you for having built the trust in those people and being able to draw out a performance which ultimately they may not be comfortable with but is challenging. Yeah. I agree with what JJ said. Cool. I want to get to the actor questions because you guys are going to have the best questions. And um, thank you guys. Like I said, it's, a, it's the biggest uh, Zoom event that we've ever done. So thank you for your patience. We took a little longer to get in, but I'm really liking uh, where we're going here. Uh, Katerina um, from Vienna, Austria. I know you, Katerina, I'm going to lower your hand. If you could ask your, uh, ask your question to Sarah, uh, that would be great. Katerina, if you could speak up. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Joseph. Thank you Hi, so much Katarina. for having me. Um, so I was wondering if you would have any special recommendation for actors um, based in Europe, um, like outside of the UK, um, on how to kind of break into that uh, UK or US market. Okay, I'm not going to want to hear this. <laughs> but come to LA or New York or London. Like, what is, sorry, just remind me because I the, um, went out a little minute. Where are you from? Vienna, Austria. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is well, I'm a I, business there. Say what? Sorry? Isn't much of a film business there? I know a lot of things go there to shoot. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I was, I, w I am trying to relocate. I was actually just when the pandemic broke out, I was relocating to New York, but then I had to come back, of course. Um, but it's, I'm, I w I'm just trying to figure out whether I can do it remotely from here. Um, just because the whole relocation is yeah, big house, especially with the working visa. So... Yeah, I was just it wondering. Is, if hold on, is Anastasia on this call? Because I learned something from you the other day coming in from England. And then the okay. same thing that happened to you. 
Anastasia. Well, one thing I oh, learned. Anastasia is from J to everyone. Anastasia is. Anastasia, if you're here, just speak up. Just say hello. Uh, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, Anastasia, yes. yes. So you had a similar situation that you were coming out here and um, with the intention of, get, of both going to school and starting to work and then the pandemic got in the way. And I learned something from you which I didn't know, which is you can get a visa to come study. So you're not like having to leave every few minutes. Uh, that an acting school can support a visa. So then you're here, because normally you just come in on a tourist visa, but then you have to leave in three months and then you have to like come back. Yeah. So I thought what you were doing, Anastasia was really great, starting in a, a school that could support your visa, going out at the same time and finding representation and auditioning. And then you can't work on that student visa, but if somebody wants you, they, it's a fairly simple process to get that transferred to an acting visa. I think it's important to come here because what you're gonna get in Vienna is maybe smaller roles that um, that just so happen productions that are just so happening to be shooting there. But if it's an important role at all, they're going to bring the the yes, American. Child. What is your accent? Well, <laughs> I did I did a uh, part of my uh, high school in the states in Colorado. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. Yeah. One I actually do have a visa, a valid visa, so I, you know, could, it's, I think it's 10 years. Um, so I could stay, no problem, but the, pro the issue is more with the working. But if you would still suggest that I just go there and, and seek rep representation and then have that converted into a working visa, I mean, that would be a plan. I'm just... Yeah, well, that's a good idea. Do you have something to... Have you worked much in in Vienna like do you have something to attract the attention of reps here yeah well I recently got a lead role in a new upcoming Austrian like feature film so um and I've, I've done a bit quite of like guest star roles and little roles um and not so much in English stuff I'm part of one series that's hopefully going to be picked up from the pilot um soon so I'm um, Helpful for that. I don't think that matters. And there's enough roles for Eastern Europeans or European actors generally. Sorry? There's enough roles for European actors here yeah. that would use your, your, you know, talent and ability and accents. And it would be a good way of getting started using what you've, what you've got. I've talked about this quite a bit is that, yes, I think you have to be here at some point in the process, but there are a lot of actors from all over the world who we have an actress in Wednesday class, Catherine DeSev, who booked a big role in The Handmaid's Tale without leaving Montreal. And I think, I think because you're not in LA, London, or New York, and Sarah, please speak to this, that doesn't mean you cannot still build relationships and network and connect and schedule virtual generals and, and do a lot of the prep work you know, the prior work, but at some point you do have to get on a plane. Sarah, would you agree with me um, that actors, just because they're not here yet, doesn't mean they cannot proactively be, yeah. you know, building I relations. I had a conversation with Martin, and a, an example of that is I represent an actor who was in Lord of the Rings. He's Australian, and he put himself on tape for, like, he, you know, from Australia, he put himself on tape for Fringe, and it was so great that they didn't even bring him into test. They just offered him the role. So the answer is yes, and that absolutely can happen. I on think I who would have thought that. <laughs> that's a, that. If I if I'm thinking if, if that is the right actor, I'm thinking of he's incredible. He was a series lead on the show, correct? Yeah, he plays. Like, he played the. I've forgotten the name of the character, but yeah. the mad scientist. It was such a good show. It's so many folks have not seen that show. Um, show of hands, just quickly on the face. You guys seen Fringe is incredible. He's terrific in it. John. Um, yeah. Anyway, he, he's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Katarina, thank you for the great question, and I'm going to take. I'm going to go to Yvonne Peretsky. Yvonne, I always love uh, Yvonne's. Uh, these are studio members. I love what you say. I love how you engage with class and the comments that you make. Uh, Yvonne, please speak up. Um, 
with a question for uh, Sarah or, or me. First, but, first, thank you. This is wonderful as always. Um, thanks, I have, well, I had four questions, but you already answered one. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Um, one, are you still accepting donations for the Actors um, Assistance Fund that you were supporting um, with or without a conversation with you, just if there is um, a place that I could send a donation? Um, yeah, of course, it's called Direct Relief. If you go onto their website, and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Um, also. Thank you. And so um, okay, then to an acting question. Um, how do you choose clients? Okay, that's such a good question. I think it's an instinct or a feeling. Number one, like I said before, somebody who I feel like I can work for you, who I know actually is something I didn't say. There's some people you meet and you like them and you know they're talented, but you think, God, what am I going to do for that person? How do I sell them? And there's some people you know you meet and you should think, God, I know exactly what to do to and how. And that's a very personal thing. Um, you know, did that answer? Um, one of the things too, Sarah, is that um, you have an incredible team and I've gotten to been able to know some of them over the years. Um, how do you guys, what's the process of sort of the, the working together as a, as a team, uh, it's a small, it's, it's a really uh, crack team of folks that you work with over there. Um, do you guys make decisions together? Does everybody have different clients that they make decisions on? Uh, does it depend on the situation? Yeah, all of the above. Firstly, and I sort of referenced this in the letter that you read. Mm -hmm. You read. Um, that you wrote, yeah. So I am fortunate enough to have six people other managers that, and we work together and there's not, I really look forward to seeing them every day. And we have a lot of fun together during this time. We've been zooming every day. And at first we were chatting about, you know, work and now we're chatting about what we're cooking or whatever, but I look forward to seeing them every day. And so the same as with clients, I want to help them, want to support them, want to introduce them to people. There's no, you know, we all work for everybody, but then it goes without saying that some people might gravitate towards, say, for example, Chris Kola, who works, who is very strong in working with female comedy talent that create their own material. Um, and I think people gravitate towards me a little bit, a lot of the English clients, because I am... Um, I'm more interested in the sort of merchant ivory type movies and period dramas and things like that. So ultimately somebody is going to gravitate, but there will be nobody who at some point hasn't heard from everybody. Uh, so if I have a good relationship with somebody who's up for a particular project, I will absolutely deal with that. Um, even though they may be talking a lot to one of the other managers, uh, so we've got an office in New York and James Cristiano has a number of comedy clients, most particularly writers who work on a lot of the late night shows. So, I, you know, I'm not really, don't have much to offer those clients. Um, so it depends. The answer is both. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. I want to, I want to just see if we can get through and I, you know, I want to not, not stay here. I'm really enjoying this. So I want to keep moving with the questions. April Linscott, um, studio member. April, if you could speak up and tell everybody your question. Um, thank you for being here. And tell everybody your name. And unmute if you are April Hi, Linscott. I'm April. And Hi, April. I live in North High, or how are you, Joseph? Doing great Doing today. Thanks for being here, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for doing this. I really appreciate it. My, my question is a little convoluted. First of all, I'm obviously not, you know, one of these young, gorgeous people. I'm an older actress, and um, I, um, I'm hoping to learn through my work with uh, the Perlman Academy what I'm best suited for. Um, so I think that that will come with time. I've not had my one-on-one -on -one with Joseph to understand 
the questions or how I should pitch myself if I'm calling producers or writers or whatever. So, so that, I'm in the learning phase, all that, although I've acted all my life, but I'm now learning how to act. But I guess, and, and this is going on Yvonne's question as well. Um, what, and it's kind of like I was, it was maybe it was an epiphany I was having here, but you know, when I was, when I'm preparing or researching or figuring out, a character, you know, I think about the characteristics. So then I thought, well, my gosh, uh, I guess maybe some of the managers would wonder about the characteristics of a person. So how do you identify the type of characteristics that you would like to have in um, a client? Does this make any sense at all? I mean, I'm not that I would change my personality, <laughs> but but I might revamp myself a little bit so that I might. Isn't that about how best to market yourself? Is that yes. what? There you go. <laughs> hmm. Choose of help. What about like um, in somehow referencing your past careers <clears throat> or whatever you you know that might be something to kind of talk about. In one of these showcases, there was a lady who came in and I, I, she was older and she was a vet and kind of tough. Um, and so you need to, she's obviously going to play on that. And I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I've been a flight line. attendant for uh, 14 years, but that's gone down the drain. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Something I don't know, Joseph, do you have any... Um, you know, I just, I think it's sort of like, yeah, because, you know, it takes a while to figure out like any question that's really important. You cannot solve the problem in your head. We cannot think through the answer. It has to be discovered. And there's lots of questions to be asked. Like, you know, what are your core values? Who are you? You know, your personality is also like, and again, over 70% of what's going to sell you. It's what Sarah said. So there's questions that have to be asked. And I think the questions are really important. You can't just figure out your branding or what that's going to be in your head. You have to start to discover it and distill it. And, and uh, so I, I think it is really important to, uh, to start to think about the person you are. Who, like basically, you guys, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Who are the people that you want to collaborate with? What is something that they could fall in love with? And it starts with your personality. And there are all these awesome things about you guys that I find in the work that you never thought to tell people. And as soon as you tell these people, you know, you get this wow and they remember you. It's like the poker thing. So, you know, these are not questions that can be figured out in the head. The, the only thing I can tell you is, April, you are wonderful and there is a way through it and a way to figure it out, um, but can't come up with a quick solution to it right now. But it has to do with, um, y yeah, it's like people want a glimpse of who they could be with you in a way, something that's really exciting. And it, and it does start with answering that question, why you do what you do, not what you do, why do you do it? And just the person that you're bringing to this question right now is someone who I would want to work with. So if you can bring that um, to these pitches, that's the, that would be the start of something awesome. And, and it's interesting. Yeah. It's just starting with who you are as a human being. Somebody said something in the chats below you guys, um, these mass submission base, uh, platforms, the backstage, the actors access, you know, they do provide many services, but high level actors do not just simply submit on backstage or actors access by the time something, I always say, Sarah, by the time a lot of projects are currently casting, it's too late to compete. If you don't have irons in the fire, if you do not, you're not coming in to that process, production approved, network approved, director approved. Um, so it's important to think about a higher level strategy than just waiting for roles to come down the AC vent and then just capturing them. So we talk about this quite a bit. I want to get to your questions. Patricia Serrano, Patricia, um, I'm going to lower your hand. Please um, speak up and, and tell us your question. Hi. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sarah and Joseph. I love working with Joseph. I, I met him at the NYU alumni uh, online event. And I've also read um, Never Eat Alone. So that's a okay. wonderful oh, cool. Uh, I also direct, uh, donated to the direct relief. And I was able to speak to um, Lucas. Oh, who, yeah. Uh, I love yeah, he's so wonderful. So um, during the Zoom meeting with Lucas, uh, because I write and I act, um, 
uh, he was telling me that I should, um, you know, like go on these Zoom dates with the uh, with like managers. Uh, sorry, like uh, people who are managers in uh, agent, um, companies that have both like lit and acting uh, together in one production uh, company. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to just make sure that. Like I look professional enough before I, you know, reach out to them. Uh, the reason is because um, even though I went to NYU uh, and I have a degree in like writing and I've also done acting, I've kind of went a different route. Uh, I went out to Hollywood 10 years ago and I tried it and I just like wasn't feeling it. So I left and I did a travel blog for the last 10 years and I've just been traveling all over the world and I guess now we can't do it <laughs> traveling all over the world, but I love working with Joseph because now I can travel like in my mind and in my writing. And it's a wow. great time to like come back to that. Um, but my online presence is basically my travel company and my travel blog. So I just wanted to make sure before I reach out to like these acting and lit managers that my online presence looks like I'm serious, you know, um, about my writing and my acting. Uh, and not just like I'm flitting all over the world. So um, I just wanted to, to like, I was just trying to figure out, should I create new social media accounts or should I rebrand? Like, I'm just trying to figure out like what, uh, what to do in that sense. Good. Thank you, Patricia. Um, Sarah, uh, when do you answer that? Or, it I don't think it looks unprofessional. I would go with, oh, it's interesting. And you may want to write on the subject, which I definitely would recommend. Also, um, I should reach out anyway and just not care if I look like, you know, professional. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm really envious. <laughs> I mean, this travel thing, when you started to talk, <laughs> sorry, when you started to talk about the travel thing, that thing is so exciting. I mean, it's sort of like, that's the, that's your, that's the story that I would say definitely to talk about. Sarah, I, would you agree with that? 100%. It's interesting. You can back it up. It's unusual. It's a hook. I, the other th people, question people ask on this subject is, should I just be concentrating on acting or, um, or the writing? And the answer is both. I, uh, <laughs> But I, I think your experience lends itself to what we were talking about before the hook, that you have really, uh, you really have something to talk about that's interesting and different. Um, so I, 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 I agree with Lucas, with what Lucas has to say. Find somebody who can look after you as a whole that's interested in what you're interested in you're traveling and interested in your ideas to move forward. And with the writing, I definitely would use your experience. Do you agree, Jason? Yes, completely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you went to an incredible writing department at NYU headed by Gary Garrison, who's incredible. I mean, just there's so many exciting parts to your story. So I, 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 I agree with everything that you're saying. And I, I think you're a very exciting person and you have a really fun sell. And, you know, and I love working with you and I look forward to continuing that conversation. Thank you, Patricia. Here's what I want to do. I want to make sure, cause there's some folks we have thing, other, you know, other things and I want to be respectful of time. If you guys, when I call your name, I want you to get just uh, tell everybody your name, but get right to the question that you're asking. And I think that'll make it so we can get to more uh, of the questions. Um, I want to go to Simon Ellis. Simon, if you could speak up and ask your, uh, let everybody know your name and ask your question, please. Hello, Joseph. Hello, hey, Simon. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you. Hello, Sarah. Um, my question is this. Um, I recall you talked about calling people. You turned up and you called David Bowie and you kept, and, uh, you keep, kept being persistent. Could you give me an idea of how to do this in a way that won't end up irritating people I might want to work with? because I, I, I'm new to all of this, I'm very new, and I don't want to come across as in a negative way. I want to build relationships, not, you know, n not create negativity. So I'd be very grateful for that, please. 
Were you on the call when we were talking about this book that I keep plugging for some um, Never Eat Alone? Yeah. Yes, I was. In okay. fact, I've just ordered it on Amazon. Oh, brilliant. I want you to talk. I have a lot to say about this. I'm going to zip my mouth, but Sarah, I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that I'm sort of repeating myself. It's a happy birthday. It's a congrats. It's a way of connecting with someone on a personal human level. So you're not keeping touch with people simply because you've added something to your reel. That I really, I'm just being blunt, that I kind of don't like. Um, and also you get a load of them. So I understand your feeling about not wanting to harass people, but I do think there's thoughtful, polite ways of doing it that doesn't seem like, God, what a pain. I don't want to watch the Goldbergs, whatever. Can I just say something? I don't know if that helps, but I just want to say something to the people with accents. Because a lot of times, um, you're English, obviously. Oh, not obviously. Are you English? Uh, oh, I, I, uh, very much BBC Radio 4 here. Okay, you've got a brilliant voice. Uh -huh. Yeah, so good. You might want to think about uh, voiceovers. But people always say, should I work on my American accent? And I say no. <laughs> because, firstly, you're competing with everybody else with an, with actually genuinely has an American accent. And secondly, sometimes it's not, uh, on some regular basis, clients have gone in with an American accent and because they, it, that what they did was so well received, the creators have said, God, this character could be English. And the other thing about it is, I've had constant feedback, and Joseph can probably speak to this as well, which is um, that when an actor goes into a room with an accent, they are so concentrated on the accent that they lose some of their personality. You've got a brilliant voice. You just... Anyway, that was beside what you asked me. Yes. I was just throwing that out as a freebie. Oh, I love, I remember you mentioned something about accents before too. And I think a lot of production will even tell actors and casting, listen, we can always work on the accent. We don't want to pull focus from you, person your personality and your brave and fun choices. And I always say that like your ability to, the ability to use the phone properly separates the doers from the dreamers. It's Steve Jobs' quote actually. He said, the ability to use the phone properly separates the doers from the dreamers. And though afraid, I think fear is the biggest thing that will shut us down. And it is, I get that, I get that we're afraid, but you'll never burn your hand and you'll never catch on fire using the telephone. And that's why it's worth it to try to figure out what are you going to communicate within seconds on the phone? Because you have seconds to communicate who you are, your core values, why you do what you do, why should somebody care? And figuring that out and distilling it into a specific phone call is worth a lot of time and energy to try to figure that out. So I, I get it. I think there's, I think a lot of folks have a fear of a, you know, the fear of a no or something like that. But it, we want to outfund fear. I think that's the best way to say it is to sort of say fuck you to fear in a way and we have to there's a point where we have to step up and be pleasantly persistent because things are not just going to fall on our lap so the the only way through that is by doing it and i, I promise you simon there's a right way through it i mean we do it all the time and what would you just, say is the right way through it what's the difference between being annoying and harassing people yes is showing up to a conversation the first time you reach out to someone and there's a right people to talk to is putting all of your, like putting somebody to work, putting somebody to work instead of, instead of paying tribute to their wonderfulness, to, to a colleague to colleague, reaching out, um, looking to collaborate in the future, but not wanting to pick something from them or needing, putting them to work. Um, like that, basically, Sarah, coming to the conversation as a colleague, um, someone who is loves their work and knows their work yeah. and you know wanting to send their information for their production files for any upcoming projects but coming at it as an equal I think that makes a really big difference and then when somebody can get familiar with you over the course of some time and get to know you and trust you and like you then you can ask for you know a, a virtual general meeting or early access to, once they get to know who you are but it's really just that first conversation is just 
one human connecting to another human being on a human level, putting your wants and your needs aside. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the way to do it is um, establishing that you're fun, showing somebody who you are, um, being grounded, being calm, not, not, and I think the putting somebody to work and the zero desperation is really important for those kind of calls. Um, Simon, thank you for your great question. Diana, um, Diana Kirk, if you could, I'll lower your hand, if you could speak right up and uh, let everybody know your name and your question. And we'll hi, everyone. I'm Diana. Um, and hey, so Diana. my question was, hi, um, what are some qualities you look for when you are pitching actors on the phone? Qualities, I'm going to just get some clarification. Uh, qualities you look for from the actors? Quality. So like things that they, like how they stand out, like if, if you were calling the, um, if you were like calling to pitch them, like what would you say about, like what are those qualities that you would say about them? If that makes sense. Well, what? Gosh, I, I think it depends on who they are and some of your history. And then a lot about your work. I mean, that's initially the, a way in. And then I would follow up with something interesting, maybe like the lady who was a stewardess or my poker player, um, mm -hmm. just as a little hook, a little story to re keep in people's minds. But I think it depends a lot on the work that you've done, how I would go in with it. And God. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry not to be able to give you specific. That makes sense. I think I, I, think, I didn't know. If, I didn't know if it was more like you tell about their work, or if it's more you tell about like something about them as an actor. Like, oh, they uh, they are really good at these types of characters, or they do this or that. If that makes sense. Yeah, all all of it. If I've seen something, because casting directors say will say things like. Uh, you know, it really has to be somebody with comedy experience. Well, I'd like to be able to go back and say, well, actually, you may not have seen this, but um, I don't feel like I've answered that question very effectively. No, I think it's sense. different. There's probably not a one size fits all. You have an intuition and an instinct for what is going to maybe be interesting to somebody else and capture their attention the way that that poker playing captured yeah. your attention. Sarah, I talk about this a lot with actors. At a certain point, when you guys are incredibly proactive, when you put out the incredible, when you light yourself up with fun and put it out and people get to know you as, as fun people to hang out with, this thing happens called momentum in a career where forces that are outside of yourself start to, you know, start to carry you along where it's like this momentum event. Um, Sarah, at what point, like, I'm sure you've experienced this a lot, but can you talk a little bit about that momentum that's triggered when a client starts to get a lot of, a lot of irons in the fire, people get to know who they are. And, and can you talk a little bit about momentum and your experience of momentum in an actor's career? Cause you've told me once, Sarah, you said that sometimes a lot of actors don't know that it takes six years to groom an actor to get them from, from here to there. And it's six years where you might not be, um, no one's making money, but it's six years of really believing them, really liking them. When, at what point, or what do you think is the trigger for that momentum in an actor's career where the, where the ball really starts moving fast um, for them? I definitely would say when this, I mean, there's a lot of answers to that question. When you have the actors done a project that people have heard about, you know, oh yes, they were on The Crown. Oh yes, to Eugene, um, he was on Game of Thrones. I mean, that generates a lot of interest and I keep referencing uh, English things, but um, something that people have seen, that's an obvious. For me, let me just think about this. For me, um, that I guess that, is what I really love when the job of a manager kind of changes. Cause at first you're pitching people, you want everybody to know who you are and then, and there's no work that you should turn down, obviously like, you know, legitimate work. Um, and then there comes a point where there's a bit of momentum and then you can start deciding, weighing up options, hopefully, or thinking I want to go down this path. This is my a particular strength that I have. 
Momentum is interesting. And I love it beyond that when clients can start developing their business outside of acting is a very fun thing for me. Somebody wants to launch, I don't know, a clothes line. Uh, I have a client right now trying to launch um, a skincare line. Then that is real momentum that you can, ultimately businesses as well as actors. Yes. So that's a lot of fun. And momentum gives you the opportunity to be brave, as Joseph was saying, to try new things. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I just, I just, just love riffing on this stuff. We'll take a couple more questions. Johanna Martinez, if you could tell everybody your name and your question, please. I'll lower your hand. Hi, everyone. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Johanna. Uh, my name is Johanna, and I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. Thank you. Uh, how do uh, how do there's like a double edged sword? So uh, you want that ammunition as an actor on your resume. Uh, to get ammunition, you do need an agent or a manager. So it's kind of like this this little weird limbo. How do you recommend that we are able to get that ammunition without those, you know, without you guys? And how how can we navigate that? Thank you for your great question, Johanna. I wish I had a great answer to go with the great question. <laughs> Short films, being on stage, uh, being at a particular showcase, like the one Joseph does, not those other ones that I was talking about. Um, God, Joseph, help me here. Yeah, no, I, I, I think so. I think I want you guys to, I want you guys to, I want to disconnect that mind virus. I call it a story of suffering that you need an agent and manager in order to get lift off of your career. Even with a great rep, it is still going to be your responsibility to get out that sickle and do that heavy cutting and build the relationship. So I would say, I always think that it's really cool to do what you love. Don't listen to the, it's like, we're like garbage cans for a lot of this, uh, these industry gurus that are, telling you to do things, but it's about what they're trying to sell you. It's like, if you don't like to create something or write, don't write, like stay with what you love, but have a lot of irons in the fire. It's not just the, the agent manager game is not the only um, game to start an actor's career off. It is, you know, start to get great. Okay. Start to really be clear about who you want to work with. Like, what do you love? And then how am I going to describe my, and what, how, what am I going to say when I get into a virtual general or a meeting with someone where someone's going to say, wow, it's going to be really, I like you, you know, like it's going to be really fun to, to hang out and then learn how to, you know, learn how to get on the phone and pitch yourself and start building those relationships because, you know, I, I think great, some great reps and actor management teams last for years. But then sometimes, they, you know, things change. They don't, as you said, Sarah, don't develop or work out in the way you'd hope. But guess what? That's life. So I want you to disconnect from your, your heads the story that just getting an agent and manager is your key to the kingdom for this career. It is a great alliance to have. But if you don't have someone who's a strategy partner, then you're going to be spending years waiting around for somebody to get engaged who never knew how to to begin with. So I guess what I'm saying, Johanna, is... There is so much you can do, an infinite amount of other things um, to attract a really high level rep team instead of waiting for one in order to get a career. Yes, uh, Sarah. I wanted to add that even when you're not working as an actor, it ha I think you do need to see it as a full-time job, presuming you don't have another job that's supporting you. But it is a full-time job going to all of those classes going to, you know, working out or whatever is your thing. Meeting people is huge. Um, doing, and then maybe going outside of an area of particular interest, like doing a writing course, because that all feeds into who you are. And the biggest thing is meeting people. Having friends who are working, who might give you a leg up, who are kind enough to do that. I, I feel you can't just go sit on a beach because you don't have a job. There's so many things that you could be doing. That is a great quote. 
I love that quote. It's such a great quote. Yeah. Nor can you go sit on a beach when you have an agent and manager team, right, Sarah? Because no. they still need help. Thank you so much. Yeah. But you guys should all go sit on a beach six feet apart from each other this weekend if you can. And just, I always say to you guys, to the actors too, Sarah, like to be nice to yourselves. Like, like this should be fun. Like be gentle to yourselves. Like take time, unplug. Don't just be solely industry focused, you know? It's like unplug, flip the switch. Yeah. Like, you know, live your lives, but be, be really nice to yourselves. How you feel is what you get. And if you're not in this amazing feeling place as much as you can be, other people are simply not going to be attracted to you. And I think everyone has this incredible beauty potential that if you can just somehow light yourselves up with fun, that's what star, qual star, star quality is for me is, are you lit up with hotter emotions than other people? Laura Stisser, um, Sarah, I, I, I want to be respectful of time. Sarah, can we do another couple questions? Are you yeah, okay? Of course. Be, okay? I'd love that. Super. Laura Stisser, great questions. Johanna, thank you. Laura, please ask, uh, tell everybody your name and, and your question. And again, thank you guys. Can't think of a, any, any place I'd rather be than here. So thank you. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Again. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Stisser um, in New York. I'm actually going to pass on my question because it's been answered a couple times here and there. And I don't want to waste any more time for extra questions. So I'm good. But thank you. Okay, yeah, no problem. Thanks, Laura. Okay, Cameron. Um, Cameron, would love to hear your question. Really excited. Recently, somewhat recently, welcome you to the studio. Uh, Cameron, please tell everybody your question. Laura, thanks hi, for being everybody. here. My name is yeah. Cameron. Hey. I'm coming from Philadelphia. Uh, hi, Sarah. Um, quick question. So, um, there is, I, I have a, um, a really interesting project that I would like to be a part of. It's a TV show that's being um, remade from a, uh, a movie that was done about 20 years ago and it hasn't really been uh, promoted. There really hasn't been anybody associated with casting. All I really know are who are like the, the main producers and the director possibly. Um, and um, it requires ballet dancers who can also act. And I used to be a ballet dancer in my past career. Um, would it be appropriate for me to just reach out to those producers and those executives who would be kind of starting this show, even though no other information has been given? Do you want to cast it up a little bit? Say again? Do you want to cast it a little bit with, do you need ballet dancers that can act or actors that can dance? Well, I, I, I don't know personally. Um, I just know that I'm a, I used to be a ballet dancer and now I'm an actor and I can fill that void of what they need. And I yes. know not many actors can do that. And I'm going to toot your horn more as you're you used to be a very high level ballet dancer. And I think you can qualify that too. When you describe you. it, I mean, it's an amazing thing. So are you asking Cameron is sort of, can I inter can I reach out to connect with that production? Like what's the specific question? So specifically, would it be overreaching for me to go to, you know, these people's um, like go to CAA and say, you know, I'm really interested in this um, production. What can I do? What can I send you? And how can I send it to you? Okay. Sorry. I think I misunderstood your question before. I thought you were developing something. You mean, you know of a project that needs yes. a ballet dance. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I think you should reach out. Okay. But I wouldn't go to CAA. Not that they aren't great, but I don't think anybody's going to yeah. make that call. I'd find somebody, maybe look at who the people involved are, mm -hmm. who the casting director is, or you don't know that. Or they don't know that. I, I know the person who's writing it, and the only information I have on that person are her agents and managers, and it, she's repped by you know certain people. So I can reach out to, to her team, but I don't have much other information besides that. Okay, well, it's a brilliant idea to reach out to her team. Yeah. And find a list of who, if you can find out who else is involved with it, just search to see if there's any points of connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I love what you just said, Sarah. It is searching. It, it, is, it is something that, you know, yeah, any points of connection. Cameron, the answer, I think, is yeah. yeah. I would say yes, 100%. Why are we waiting for something to fall out of the sky and fall into our lap? Somebody said something, a brilliant um, 
my first uh, drama instructor, uh, Roz Clark, who's um, from England, she said, what is for you will not go by you, but it doesn't mean it wasn't your responsibility to reach out and grab it. Mm -hmm. um, go for it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. it's what I was saying before this whole time. Just go for it. Certainly call the writer's r representatives. I mean... Yeah, and, and you know, I'm looking at the comments and a lot of people are saying use IMDb Pro. There's not anything on IMDb Pro either about yes. it. Oh, there might not be anything about it, but there's ways to get a hold of people. And I always say right. to actors, like, and, or people in general, I can't find a number for something, look harder. The hardest numbers have taken about 20 minutes to find. I try to do it all the time. IMDb Pro is incredible. There might not be anything about the project, but there certainly are going to be ways to reach high-level production members uh, yeah. through IMDb Pro. IMDb Definitely. Pro. Look as many people yeah. up on IMDb as you possibly can yeah. and find the connection. Absolutely call the, uh, the writer's reps. Do you yeah, know I, when it's going? I mean, is it going soon? Um, they haven't given any dates. Um, they just have given a few names for this production. Like they have the writer, they have the uh, executive yeah. producer. That's a great way in for you, by the way. Yeah. Your strength as a ballet dancer. Yeah. Did you see this movie Julian Sands was in, Joseph? It was uh, on that. It's called Yay Ballet. Oh, no. Is it a new one? Oh. Yeah, I think Yay it's Ballet. On Netflix. Julian Sands, incredible. Were, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Those were actors. I'm sorry. There's a couple of boys who I thought were really lovely, Indian boys, and it's about their story who... Um, and their way out of the slums of India to become like they both worked with major ballet companies. I'm only mentioning it, but obviously it was their way to get out, well, to continue their ballet career, but also cool. become, become an actor. It's on Netflix. Somebody just reminded us wonderfully. Thank you. It's on Netflix. Julian Sands has been, uh, how long have you been working with Julian? Sarah? Well, you know what? I've known him my, literally my entire life, so that's quite a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. He so is, our parents were friends, and we're yeah. from the same part of England. And Those yeah. of you that don't know, Julian Sands uh, starred in A Room with a View, uh, Boxing Helena. Um, what's that? Was it Warlock? Is that one of the big yeah. Warlock? He's so wonderful. He so loves what he does, loves theater, um, toured a, a pinter show. That he, He's such a character. I have so many fun stories funny stories of when you originally referred Julian to me, he had never booked a role from a straight audition oh because yeah. of the, he said, I go into the room and all of these, he said the word, I can't say these, you know, C words are looking at me. And he said, some casting director asked him once, said something, um, so tell me what you've done. And he said something, I, you know, you first or something. He had this attitude about going into auditions. But within a couple of weeks or so, he booked his first big, um, some HBO show, his first audition. And he's fantastic. He's, he's really a fun guy. Eugene, you know him really well as well, too. Uh, he's a character. He introduced me to Eugene, actually. Oh, cool. He's the way, he's the way that I met. He's back to getting a rep. When somebody calls. Called Eugene, yeah. And says, uh, you know, whether it's a client, a friend, a Joseph Pillman and says, this person is terrific. You have to pay attention. I will absolutely pay attention. So it's the best way if you, I mean, speaking to your, you also um, about the ballet project, the best way is to get a personal recommendation, even if it's a couple of degrees of separation, because you will look at that in a way that you don't look at mass emails. And Thank you, Sarah. Eugene, what were you going to say? I'd love you to say something if it was about, um, uh, our friend Julian Sands, Eugene. Well, jo jo Julian, Julian was the way in which that I met both of you. So were it not for darling Julian, I would not have spe be speaking to either of you right now. And that wonderful voice of his, um, he's a marvelous guy. And I, I, yes. it's impossible not to talk about him in, in a fond light. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fun. I just, um, I'm totally lit up when I think about him and all the outrageous things, stories that, things that have happened. Uh, I want to just take a couple more questions. I wish we could get to everybody's, but uh, Ryan uh, Satterfield, uh, if you could ask your question and, and we'll um, really try to keep it no longer than another nine minutes or so. Ryan? Yeah, hey, hey, Joseph. Hey, Ryan. Hello, Sarah. I, Live uh, from the Golden Gate Bridge. Hello, Ryan. Yeah, right here. Uh, 
No. It's a- so I'm based in Chicago, and I remember you talking about New York and L.A. specifically, and also Atlanta now with them in the TV film market. Now, my question is, because I'm in Chicago, does would you say Chicago is kind of at a similar advantage or more of a disadvantage in comparison to some places like New York and L.A. when wanting to book higher level work while still being in a separate market? Listen, I, I'm going to just jump in quickly. Listen, I think that the story, you know, the story of I can't do this until I'm there, you can get into competition, you can get into gear, you can build relationships with people wherever you're at. At some point, you're going to have to go to that location to shoot that or for some chemistry read or triple producer session or something like that. But don't let, I just was going to say like, it's like, don't let your not being here, especially right now, get in the way of you starting to strategize. But Sarah, I'd love your thoughts on that question. That's mixed, isn't it? If Martin Davis is still on. He's from Chicago. And I was like, oh, I know Martin. What? I know Martin personally, yeah. So, um, listen, God, I just, there's so many answers because for every thing I say, and then we'd say it's impossible. And then I say people do it all the time. You know, like my client John Noble, who put himself on tape and then all of a sudden he's moved out here and he's on fringe. I mean, it helps a lot because back to what else I said was the amount of networking. This is a city, obviously, where everywhere you go, everybody has a script. The coffee table next door, they're talking about their auditions. And there is something maybe claustrophobic about that, but there's something also that, it's, there's unlimited potential to make friends and develop your career. But then there are also really great, um, you know, Steppenwolf, of course, my, actually my uh, sister-in-law is a director there. And um, there's always those great opportunities. People go to Steppenwolf and I don't know, potentially see clients. Ultimately, I think the work that you'll get in Chicago might be nice little pieces. I actually have a client working on Fargo and that shooting there. But they brought him out from here. So there may be moments or co-stars or something a little bit interesting there. But any more major role is definitely, they're going to bring somebody out. Thanks, Sarah. Not what you wanted to hear. But <laughs> well, listen, I don't think you're delivering one, you don't, you're not saying it's definitively this or definitively that. It's just... You know, it doesn't, it takes, if you know how to do it, 30 to 60 seconds to make a phone call to get a relationship hot and to get into the competition mix and you can have a videotape and you can get the ball rolling. You're not at a disadvantage to start getting the ball rolling where you're at, but they're planes, they go back and forth and at some point you're going to need to be prepared to get on a plane and to come in uh, in person at some point when, when that's advisable to do that. But uh, like I said, we have many actors who do this, who go come back and forth. An actress who never left her, never left Montreal and booked a major role on Handmaid's Tale simply by building a relationship with okay. Elizabeth Moss and the production office. And then she goes to shoot the film. Um, just another okay, couple... Do you have an agent in Chicago? I do, yes. Okay, so if you ever do come here, you can see who they are in business with over here and well, somebody just in this chat said the Chicago agents feel a bit betrayed when you leave them. You know, they think you're going to dump them when you Chicago, come to the Chicago, the agents get betrayed, system. LOL, at least back then. Again, this is, yeah. I think, again, story, mind viruses and stories of suffering, and you don't need to make you're not being here right now an obstacle to getting your career off the ground. Um, Sarah, I, I, I know, listen, we, we've gone over... I cannot thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for just being such a wonderful person um, to this community <laughs> over the I'll years. <laughs> just thank you, you know, thank you for doing this and sharing your heart and soul with us and being, it, this is like what it's all about. So thank you very, very much, Sarah. But I don't mind answering if when Zoom goes out, do I lose my chat? Because I don't mind answering a few little... Good. I want to I I answer a few more, but I just, we have some folks who have to check out, but we're going we're gonna to take a couple questions. Sybil, ask your question. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not finished yet, you guys. Sybil, um, please ask your question. 
first of all, thank you guys. This has been so amazing. And I've realized like mind viruses, they get you. And, um, I also like that you said, Joseph, I got a new idea. I want to say, um, network approved. I love that. That's like a good mindset. Network approved. Well, yeah. Um, to, if I just wanted to ask, what did you guys say? Sorry. Um, yes, to go into a situation network approved, Sybil. Um, totally. Yeah. Amazing. Question. Do you have a question for Sarah? Would love to. Uh, and also, be yes. careful if you are driving. My gosh. Oh, I'm not driving. Okay. I'm parked. Okay. Good. <laughs> um. Yeah. My question is. Um. Uh. Yeah. I'm. I'm a creator. I. I. I write and and act, and that's my passion. My uh, manager is just an uh, an acting person, um, and not on the phone. You know, um, do you think that I should find uh, some rep that's dual? That's my question. And how do I market that? How do I stand out when I say I'm a writer and an actor? Well, I mean, I'll tell you how you stand out. It's like, it's so interesting to see you guys are so wonderful, but you leave out the sexiest parts of what you're doing. You just produced a movie with who's, with what stars, Sybil? You just produced a movie a couple months ago with what stars? Right, right, Tom Sizemore. Yeah. Okay, so it's like, you need to start with that kind of stuff. It's like, why are we not talking about, you know, I love what Sarah calls it. We find a hook in the acting. What's the thing that makes it so you don't have to act anymore and lights you up and makes you instantly memorable? Well, man, it would be sad if you didn't yeah. describe this incredible project you just pitched. So, yeah, that, Why did Joseph have to uh, get that information out of you? That should have been what you met with. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have a mental block. <laughs> thank uh, you so much. Thank you, Sybil. I want to take. Uh, thank, thank you. I want to jump into. I want to take another. I want to take another question. But thank, thank you, um, Alexis. Uh, Sabo, Ale Alexis, if you could um, speak up and ask your yeah, question. Yeah. Hi. You um, again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I just had a quick question about about like branding again. So I feel like something that might set me apart or that I've been like doing is set me apart is that like I play like a free spirited neurotic, which is, which is kind of like, I'm like a teenager who is like, um, I go, I go with the flow, but I'm also like anxious and I'm like just like a really caring person, but, and like, I'll do anything, but then I'll kind of like back away. This is also just like who I am as a person. So it kind of helps. I just was curious on like, could that be my hook? Because I don't speak another language or anything. I'm not a singer. So I just was wondering if like personality could be a hook or something. I think, well, Sarah, I'll have you answer that. I think your personality is the how you deliver what the hook is um, for sure. And it goes far. Sarah, how would you, I mean, what would you say? Well, um, I think you need the work to back it up. Like the the roles I play, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Like like the the kinds of roles that go with the personality. That well, kind of thing. to begin, that's a, like a hook in, like um, the um, man that was a ballet dancer. How you get? You know, there is a hook to get in, and you have to find it. But with you, because it's not necessarily a skill, and it's how you perceive yourself. I would try, even if it's student movies or whatever it is, trying to find that work that you feel confident about doing. And that's definitely a way in. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, I mean, that, that helps. That definitely helps. Thank you, Alexis. Thanks. I'm going to take a question for you. I have a couple, just a couple more questions, you guys. Studio members, Marcus. Marcus Hansen. We've been working together for years. Marcus, tell everybody your name and, um, and your question, please. Hey, um, yeah, sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you wonderfully. I'd say cheers, but it's empty. Hello, oh, Marcus. Always the first person at our happy hour events, virtual <laughs> or in person. Uh, I miss you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. too. Um, hi, Sarah. Good to see you again. It's nice to see you. Um, you know, I know you mentioned, I'm trying to read this, you mentioned how often you like to maybe chat with an actor, you know, maybe what they've done proactively uh, or what have you. Uh, just wondering, is that something where, you know, you just like to keep, you know, if we wanted to keep, or not, we keep tabs on each other or, um, 
you know, don't want to necessarily bug an agent or a manager with their, uh, you know, oh, you know, just saw this, just saw that, you know, have stuff on Google alerts or what have you. But what would once every three months be sufficient or, or just, just out of the blue, just, hey, I just heard this happened. Uh, just want to send you congrats. Um, is there any set, you know, I, I hear a lot of different things and I'd just like to get your take on yeah, how often some of different opinions. Joseph, what do you think? Once every few months is nice. Whenever you see something relevant, I probably is the best answer to that. You talking about Marcus actors and their reps and the follow up? Um, yeah, or follow up. And just, just just checking in with reps to see uh, you know number one if they need anything uh, from me or just uh, to you know try to connect on a personal level as well. I think Sarah, you said it best in your letter. It's like you said it best is don't call every day for a twenty minute conversation, but don't go right, weeks right. without actually checking in and just sort of re re getting a, a refresher of what the strategy or just to check in. I, I, I just, I took it from that letter, Sarah. Would you say that that was still accurate? I really believe that. I wrote it ages ago, I'm so impressed. It's so fucking thing. good. I mean, so is that the answer to the question? I just yeah. think like, because I think a lot of actors are, are sort of on these big rosters of reps and it's like, I say to you guys, if, if you're not checking in regularly throughout the year, it's just like the equivalent of somebody, you know, throwing gum on the wall and seeing what's sticking. And it also suggests that somebody might not personally like you or, per, you know, it's like if you personally are engaged in another person, then I think the follow-up is going to happen automatically if the two parties are engaged in strategy and one person is not looking for another person to sort of do everything for them. So I think it's a, a, a balance just because of from the view that I have and, and also from Sarah, what you've said before. Well, yeah, I, I was wondering if there's a balance of, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Especially if you, I think the answer is if you've got something to say, it isn't like, what have you, what can you do for me sort of thing, but is right. something specific. Um, we're talking about before you've got representation or after you've got representation. Uh, more, I guess, after. And, you know, I, what I'd like to do is, and I think I had this conversation with you a little bit, um, you know, I'd like to check in to see how they're doing and people are doing in general. I mean, Joseph has these bar nights, which is great. Um, it, you know, the guards down and, you know, we can all learn about each other. And that's what I like to do. It's just, you know, being on a, uh, I guess, a real personal level with, with someone to say that, you know, hey, here's the real me. And, you know, I'd like to get to uh, know you better, not for the fact of, okay, hey, uh, give me a job, but, you know, just to, you know, have a, if you want to say a true friendship, um, you know, I, I, I have a former agent that I'm still a friend with. You know, but, you know, I just like to say, okay, you know, what, I guess, what kind of balance can you have there, I guess, professionally as a check-in, but also maybe personally. I'm going to say something really quickly. Marcus, in addition to being a phenomenal actor, you're also one of the most phenomenal people that I happen to know. And I don't want you to overthink this question because I think you have a really good instinct as to what to do, just being yourself. So don't overthink it. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah is, would you agree with that? Or, I mean, I know you don't. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I, I would, yeah, like it just, you see how somebody responds to you, obviously, and what your, your instinct about it is. I would just go with however you are with, with friends. But also remember that we work for you. And there are people who are, I, I, so I don't know, I'm trying to think other people who I'm really friends with. There aren't people who I would call that I look after and say I've had a effing hard day at work I can't stand it I mean I have some friends who I might say that to yeah. but you know we still work for you thank you well, I appreciate that thank you thanks Joseph thank you um, Jose are you still there are you are, I don't want to let you go if you're still here I'd love you to speak up if you're not Jose are you here uh, Angel uh, let's see um, Angel if you could ask your question please that would be great thank you Terry Hi, uh, I'm Angel. Hi. I'm from Cyprus, and there aren't ma many things to do here in terms of acting on the on screen. So I don't have 
an idea where to start uh, on that. Okay. So what do you do in, in, from Cyprus? Like, what can you do? I mean, my advice is to always find a way to get great. You can connect to the highest level training online in this format um, and, you know, to, to, to get great. But somebody, are you just getting started, Angel? Like, are you just would like to have a career? Yeah, I um, I just turned 17. So I'm trying to look uh, how I'm going to get there. Sorry, um, my English isn't aren't very good, but I will try to improve on that. And I, I signed for a course uh, which is after school uh, about acting uh, in theater and also vocal lessons. And I will start next year, but I don't know if I should um, sign to backstage if they if I can uh, sign up for roles like that because I'm from a, a country in Europe which is very far away. Thank you, Angel. Um, Sarah, any advice to actors who are in v you know various places in the world who are just starting to think about this as a career? Um, and we'll do another question after this, but um, Sarah, your thoughts. Is there much work in Cyprus for you? I mean, is there no. much, does Cyprus have a film industry? No, uh, there isn't any. Most, actor, uh, most actors come from Greece, which is very near Cyprus. All, all the filming industry is in Greece. Uh, Cyprus doesn't have anything. So I don't know what to do. Would you go to Greece? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, moving to uh, England f uh, for studies, but uh, that won't happen for another two years. So I'm just seeing what ca I can do now. It's tough, isn't it? I, I mean, my instinct is, firstly, your English is good. I mean, you clearly understand everything and you made yourself very clear. I would try to make yourself even clearer. I'm not saying get an English or American accent, but have okay. your, because it's, it's obviously a variety of- I'm going to mute you, Angel, uh, just because we're getting feedback. Sorry, sorry, we're just getting a little feedback. Your, I'm sorry, a, a variety of European roles or even South American roles. But so I think it's fine to have a bit of an accent. You're never going to have an American, a great American accent or a great English accent. But if you could, speak a little more clearly and go to London or come here, I think it would be a good idea because to launch a much bigger career, unless you want to be a Greek star, you're going to have to come to an English speaking country. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, Angel, you can't learn how to get great as an actor from where you're at. Does it make sense? That is, it's not enough to be good. You've got to be great and you can yeah. do that from where you're at um, and plug into it um, online. Um, I want to go to one more question and it's the last question. It's going to be Mal, if you could, I'm um, lowering your hand. Mal, if you can speak your question out and then we will... This will be the last question. And thank you guys again for, for hanging out with us, um, hanging out for uh, today. Mel? Hi. Um, hi, Mel. Hi, I'm Mallory. Um, I just had a question. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Good Jen. To again. Thanks so much. Um, so how big is social media? I'm not very big on social media, I've obviously. Um, it's, it's a big deal, you know, in, in 2020, but how big is it? Is it something that you have to have a ton of followers before you can really succeed in the industry? Or is it something that, you know, it's okay starting out that you don't have a lot of followers? I know a lot of the, um, the contracts now say, okay, you have to do so much social media and that's understandable, but do you have to have a lot of followers going into, uh, your career and, and getting started in your career? 
I don't think going, getting started in your career, I mean, how are you going to build those followers for a start? Um, I think where followers really matters is when you're moving into, actually, I'm going to go back. Well, firstly, definitely when you're moving into endorsing projects, people want to know that you've got a certain amount of followers. And I think that agents and managers, casting people do look at followers because they want to know that this is a successful person. People want to watch them. Not only people want to watch them, but they want to kind of follow through and learn more about them or would actually um, click on a link that they may have put on. But I don't think at the beginning of the career any expect, anybody's expecting you to have a big social media presence because where do you get it from? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mel. Um, Sarah, I, I think I think we've covered a lot of stuff today. Uh, again, thank you guys for spending time with us. Um, is there any uh, anything that you feel any final advice to actors um, that Sarah that you'd like to say to them, or do you feel like we've covered a, you know we've covered sort of what that would be already before we all head out into this hopefully relaxing long weekend. Well, bad, which is why. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> not really. Uh, I kind of don't. Good. Because I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. I think a lot of stuff has been uncovered. Um, Sarah, thank you again for, for doing this and for oh, just... A pleasure. And I really enjoy you. it. And as overwhelming as our fundraiser got, now the numbers are dwindling. And I feel, oh, oh my God, what am I going to do? I really love giving advice and trying to promote people's career. I think that's ultimately what drew me into management. It's exciting. And I really enjoy, really enjoy it. Let's do another fun event, something, something a little different. Or there's, it's like we, we have this incredible global audience right now and, um, you know, on another topic and would love to, would love to you know, do more fun content. Um, yeah. Should you want to, Sarah? No, I'd love that. And maybe we could bring right. on. Uh, other opinions from casting yes. directors or agents yeah. how we work differently agents yeah. managers and that kind of thing. be fun to have a, a panel uh, next time maybe um, a client uh, a high level casting director or high level producer agent yeah, manager yeah. something like that okay. you got what's that that would be a, that's a great idea good thank you guys take good care of yourselves um you know, be nice to yourselves, and I cannot wait to see you guys next week in the classes. If you haven't come to a free audit, come to a free audit. Check out the um, uh, Window to Hollywood show that Eugene and I are starting to get uh, gear up. We're starting to get some really exciting interviews, and and then uh, join us next Friday for a working session with Kiki Sukazane. And um, as always, like find ways to have fun, live life hotter you know when you're lit up with fun you can do anything and you can change the things around you reminds me of that great max Planck quote when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change um so enjoy be well and until next time you guys thank you very much for being a part of this and and just being a part of the community for all of these years and sarah thank you again for thank you for so all much of for the wonderful me. um wonderful conversation well you guys all right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.